Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Jupyter Notebooks. You've probably heard about Jupyter Notebooks before. They are incredibly useful and very common in data science. They provide documentation, iterative calculations on data science problems with Python, R, Julia, Scala, etc. And we're going to go over some basics on how to use them, what they're useful for, how to make them extensible, and how to customize them. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So to get started with Jupyter Notebooks, you need to first have a project. It's kind of like having a Git repo, and you have all of your files in this repo, and we're going to open a notebook in that repo. So I have a repo here where I am learning the Pandas library for data science, and there are several items in here. I have a couple CSVs, and I have a Python notebook. So I'm going to go into this file. And I'm now in here on, in the command line. And what I'm going to do is Jupyter Notebook. Running that, and this is a key point, when you have a Jupyter Notebook open and you run the command from the command line, that terminal will be active running this command as a server for your browser-based Jupyter Notebook display. And it needs to run the entire time. So you're going to have a command line or a terminal emulator window open the entire time when you're using a Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to run it. It will start the server. It's in the browser. And you'll see something probably similar to this. So I'll show you what mine looks like towards the end of this. But this is what you're going to see, some, something akin to this. Or you might see a, a file directory. Like for instance, I have a color theme on mine. I'll explain this later. Um, but you'll see like a listing of files. And you can open up the notebook. So this is IP IPYNB ipython notebook and that is what would open up into something like this where you would actually see the notebook itself so in the notebooks themselves they have different types of cells and you can see that each of these are cells i can go up and down with arrow key i'm going to turn on screen key so i can go up and down and i can do j and k so for vim users this is really handy if i want to add a cell i can do b for below, add a cell below, and I'm going to type. Uh, and before I type, cells in the in default uh, Jupyter have two modes. There is like the actual inserting mode, where you actually are inserting text, or code, whatever, and then there's the command mode. So, for instance, um, you can see that it's blue right in here. This would mean that I'm currently in command mode. I'm moving around. It's kind of like normal mode in Vim, but if I hit press Enter, it turns green. And now I have my little cursor in, or my, yeah, the cursor in here, and it's ready to receive text. Print, hello world. Okay, and if I wanted to press enter, okay, that doesn't do anything. How do I execute this code? Well, I need to press escape, back to quote unquote normal mode, and then I can do control enter to execute the cell. That's cool. And I can do shift enter, and that will actually run it and then put a cell below that cell for me. So that's also neat. And if you saw that, what happened right there, if I press shift enter, it actually lets me enter and I'm already in quote unquote, I'm just gonna refer to it as insert mode from now on, but it automatically puts me into insert mode in a cell directly below it. And if I do alt enter, it does the exact same thing. So alt enter, shift enter, that's run the cell, create a new cell below it, and get ready to type in that cell. If I wanted to get rid of a cell, I just have to be in normal mode. DD will get rid of that cell. And I haven't changed any of these key bindings. These are the default standard key bindings. So I can maneuver, I can add cells, I can execute cells. I But what is this? This isn't code. This is actually markdown. So there are a couple different types of cells that you can have in these notebooks. So this way you could actually have your code running, execute, and you can iterate. And that's one of the very important reasons about why these are so useful for data science. Notebook type interfaces like this. I, in R, you have um, the actual HTML R notebooks, or you have our markdown code chunks you can run iteratively. You do this so that when you're running your analysis, doing your calculations, you can see the results, change little variables, 
excuse me, tweak things and look at your, your scatter plots, get rid of um, you know, a bunch of outliers or add a logarithmic scale to it so it doesn't look all quite so skewed or like an asymptote, um, et cetera. There's a lot of reasons about why these notebook type um, interfaces are really great for data science. And it's a lot of it's really just down to documentation, iteration, and um, reproducibility and the ability to iterate. So if I go through, you can hear my cats in the background. If I go and uh, start a new cell, so I'm gonna do B for below. Now I have a new cell. I can enter, I can type something. Hello there. Okay, I escaped and I'm gonna run the cell. Control enter. Uh, that's an error. It's because it's expecting Python code. I'm in a Python notebook. You can see the icon right here. You can do an R notebook. You can do, I, I think it's scheme, R, Julia, Python. All these languages are supported in these notebooks, but that's not what I actually wanted. I did not want an error. I wanted to just put the text there. So by default, these are code cells. I want to actually make this a markdown cell. And the way you do that is you would do M for markdown. So now you don't see that there's not like an in or a line number. There's no line number here. It's just the text. Okay. So now if I press control enter, it actually runs the markdown cell and now it just displays text just like this. Cause you saw that it was wrapped around in this little cell looking interface there. If I go into insert mode, it does it again. But when I actually escape and run it, now it actually displays as normal text. Cool. Well, what if I want to insert something above this current cell? I can do A for above. And if it's a markdown cell and I have, you know, more text in here, I can run that cell, control enter. And, oh wait, no, I wanted this to be a code cell. Well, to make it from a markdown cell to code or any other type of, of uh, cell to code, you're just going to do the Y key. And now it's a code cell. Enter, delete that, print, hi and now it will actually execute that code. So there are a lot of key bindings in these notebooks. I'm not gonna cover all of them. If you wanted to see more, if you go under uh, help and go to keyboard shortcuts, it'll show you all the different shortcuts. I'm just gonna show like some of the basic ones to really get you started uh, because keyboard shortcuts are honestly how you get faster with everything. That's why Vim is so awesome is that your hands are on the keyboard, not the mouse. So there are a lot of them and you can go and you know, play with those study them, uh, become familiar with them, but we're gonna cover a few more essentials. So if I do J and K and I'm going up and down and I can you know, go to a different cell, I wanna move this cell lower. So I can do X to cut that cell and I can go down here and I can press V to paste. I can also cut it, go back up, and if I do Shift V, so an uppercase V, it'll actually paste above. If I wanna just copy it, I can just press C V to paste, and now I have it twice. So in this case, in this way, you can actually move them around. And because I'm still in normal mode or command mode, whatever the, the modes are, there's only two modes, run a command or you're actually typing something into the cell. I can just run these, I can run, 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 whatever. And you can run through all the cells in your notebook. Escape, delete that bottom one, move up here, cool. But there's also something really cool that if you have Let's just enter here and bam. So I got a bunch of extra lines in here, but I wanna have line numbers. Say you have, if you're the type that just really wants one cell with a lot of code in it and you just want line numbers, J and K will actually move you up um, different cell selections, but doing L will actually add line numbers to your cells and toggle that on and off. I think that's really useful. If you're a Vim user and you really need to have absolutely everything be like Vim, you actually can go in here and edit your keyboard shortcuts and actually change them to be more Vim-like. And uh, it will remember your settings on your machine. I haven't done that because I'm honestly okay with a lot of the defaults and it's just fine. Um, I do believe it saves it. I'm not sure if it saves it in a like a file in a specific location, like a dot file that you can maintain. But there's also this um, repo, Jupyter Vim binding, where it will actually do Vim key bindings and add a third mode to the cells, which is a Vim mode. Now I haven't dealt with this yet. Um, 
I'm probably not going to just because I think the defaults are just fine for what I'm using it for, which is just Python. And uh, honestly, if I'm gonna do like applications in Python, I'm probably just gonna use VS Code so I can use Kite um, because I'm having some issues with Kite in Vim. But in any case, there is this and there are um, extensions for Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, I think it's Jupyter NB extension. Uh, yeah, NB extension. If you download NB extension, it will give you a bunch of different um, extensible parts of Jupyter Notebooks. For instance, if you wanna have a custom theme, which I do, uh, you can use Jupyter NB extension and that will actually let you use custom themes. So what does a custom theme look like? So I currently have Grubbox as my theme on my Jupyter Notebook because I like Grubbox on everything. It'll just take a little minute to load up here. But you can see that I have a custom theme on here that is Grubbox. So how does one get this? You're gonna do um, Jupyter NB extension has to be installed and you're going to install Jupyter theme. So with Jupyter theme, it's in, if once you have it installed, and I think it might be installed with uh, NB extension when you install that, but in any case, Jupyter theme allows you to add a custom theme to your Jupyter notebooks. Um, so that doesn't do anything, but if I did JT-T, and what I have is I have Grubbox Dark as my theme, but let's do Grubbox L. Let's see if that changes it. So to do that, and you actually see it reflected, you'll need to restart your um, Jupyter Notebook server, and then once that's done, it will uh, be set to that. So let's redo. So let's run it again. It'll open in the browser. And now I have Grubbox Lite, because I did Grubbox L for Lite. So I currently like dark, but in that case, you can just pass a new argument, JT dash T, and then the argument of what theme you would like. There are additional options that you can specify with JT. Like for instance, I have this one that basically did my setup. Uh, I forget what FS does, but um, it's in the, the man page for that. But all I did was uh, gr Grubbox dark. I'm using Fira code as my font and then whatever FS is, I forget off the top of my head. So if I run that, that will change my settings for my Jupyter Notebooks. I'm gonna close that server. And then once I restart it, I will be good to go with my dark theme once again. And there we go. So in that case, there are several themes. It's not like um, a large amount of list of themes but that you have access to. But in this case, um, it has what I wanted. I, I was actually surprised that it had Grubbox Dark, but it does. I grabbed it and I'm happy. So check out Jupyter Notebooks. They're really cool for data science, especially if you're gonna do something like Python. Uh, if you're gonna do R code, honestly, just stick with RStudio. It's it's a fantastic IDE for that. There are a lot of command, uh, like hotkey commands you can do. It does have a Vim mode. And just the tooling on RStudio, in my opinion, is absolutely excellent. It is awesome for doing R development. Um, but if it comes down to Python, I haven't found an IDE I really, really like at this point. Um, I like using Kite, but uh, I'm having some issues with that with Vim. and VS Code is kind of awesome, so, or VS Codium is what I use. So, you know, it's just trying out different tools, but I can definitely see the appeal of notebooks, adding documentation in line with your code, actually executing cells, um, being able to work iteratively, having your documentation next to your code, really useful tool. Do recommend checking it out, and because you can change the key bindings, you can change the theme, you basically you can rice this and customize it, it's, it's a very useful tool that I can see a lot of people enjoying uh, a lot. So check it out. And before I go, a quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you, Devin and Alberto, for supporting the channel. It's guys like you that make this more possible. And if you'd like to support the channel, leave comments down below, click the like button, subscribe, ding the bell, and I will catch you guys in the next one.